Welcome to another NEREX webinar. Today, of course, we'll be talking about the new version of Satori uh, and all the new features that are there. Um, and for those of you who haven't been to a NEREX webinar before, a brief introduction. So NEREX has been innovating FNIR solutions for about 20, 20 years for a wide range of studies uh, run, run by a broad field of researchers. Uh, in that pursuit, our teams have developed full lab solutions to optimize this scientific process around FNIRS-based research. Uh, these include you know, comprehensive training, support, a lot of easy to use hardware and software, um, and even to the point where we're providing a very powerful, comprehensive, you know, supported commercial FNIRS analysis software, Satori, so today we we look at that uh, in the newest version, and um, you'll all be you know getting a notice today about this release. Um, so the the considerations for the webinar we'll get to, but of course at NEREX you can you can connect with us here at webinars. Um, we really encourage people to reach out to us at consulting.nerex.net for all kinds of questions, all the socials, lots of ways to to keep engaged. Um, and one really great way is to subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, we only send these out every few months, um, but they're including very useful and um, good to know information uh, when it's available. So that's a great way to, to stay connected as well. Today, myself, Jeremy, I'm a manager here at NEREX and the North American Wing um, are gonna be presenting along with Michael. He'll be showing us more of the new features Armin and, and Amy will be helping us on the back end answering questions. Um, their pictures aren't here, but you can see their faces. Uh, just a couple of considerations for the webinar, remind, reminding everyone that you're muted, um, but for sure throughout the presentation, feel free to submit questions in the Zoom chat uh, so that we can collect those and also address those. So at the end, uh, we'll also be, be talking about all the questions that were submitted when you all registered for the webinar. Uh, the recording will be up on our webpage and on YouTube at some point. And of course, again, please feel free to reach out to us via these email addresses with questions about Satori and all sorts of other things. Um, so what we'll, we'll start off with is a brief introduction to Satori, its current version. I'll quickly go through this just to kind of acclimate all of us to um, the software as it currently stands. And then we'll have Michael kind of dive into all of the new features. So let me just switch over to our view of Satori. So what I'd like to actually do is, is drop back for a second um, and talk about you know, the view of Satori and what this graphical user interface sort of looks like. <clears throat> Without any data, we can see there's gonna be a couple of different uh, icons for us to jump into different views. Of course, there's like the typical windows uh, menus for a lot of different functions and features. But if I jump into, go ahead and opening um, uh, FNIR's data recording, we can look at a few of uh, the features and the way that the software is sort of laid out. So what we can have here, and one of the main sort of views is all of the channels, the data channels kind of on a 2D head map. Um, we can look at individual channels by clicking on those, look at the actual time course, um, as well as like the frequency spectrum or even a event-related average just by clicking on some of these icons at the top. We can remove those views and include them again by clicking those. We can look at, you know, here the oxygenated hemoglobin concentration estimation. Uh, we can include deoxy there. We can even go back to looking at just the raw data, intensity of light, and a couple of other you know, key points about the recording are down here in the bottom right as well. We've got uh, a couple other very handy views, a two-dimensional view where we can really see where these source and detectors are located and the channels that are formed with their combination, um, as well as just that sort of channel view. We can also look at the 3D view of where those channels, sources, and detectors are with respect to you know, the anatomy, which is really great. And we can, we can see how useful this can be, especially with looking at end results of the analysis. 
Um, another another good button to click now and then is going to be this log view where we can see a lot of information about what is going on in the background behind sort of a lot of the graphical user interface. Uh, Michael could talk more about this, but for, for sure that's uh, an enhancement in this new version, Satori 2.0. So I'll go ahead and jump into um, looking more at some of the features for actually running analysis. So if we look at a single you know, data recording and are going to go through uh, processing the data to some degree, um, we have an FNIR's data pre-processing menu <clears throat> with major categories like rejecting channels, addressing motion artifacts, dealing with physiological noise in general, normalizing and deciding whether or not we want to do this on the raw optical density or concentrations of hemoglobin. By clicking on this advanced button, we can see a lot of the options around these major categories of pre-processing and can control and decide exactly what parameters we want to use um, and then move forward with some analysis. So for now, I'll just run something very simple on this data to demonstrate so after we run run some analysis steps on uh, the data, we can already look at uh, the changes that occurred in the plots, uh, as well as we see that we've changed the name of the file. So of course we're not saving over that raw raw data, um, but saving another SNR file um, with some information about what processing steps were already done to it. Um, Another interesting and, and maybe often used feature will be this event manager, where we can see the actual timing of the trials that were included in this recording. So this is a finger tapping data set from our getting started guide. Um, and here we can adjust a couple of different things about the color of those just on the graphical user interface. Maybe we want to put more relevant names for the trial types that are here, for example. Just to keep track of things, we can edit durations and a lot of other aspects of these um, of these events if needed. It's always important to remember to apply all those changes to the data set. So another way we could go about doing processing of the data is to use the workflow manager. So here we can drag and drop new um, aspects or new steps in our data pre-processing and connect those together in a visually um, represented pipeline. And here we can connect those steps with um, these little graphical connections um, and create an entire pipeline uh, for our analysis. And then save that pipeline, maybe edit it later, maybe share it with collaborators and also have them load and, and edit and improve some, some aspects of your pipeline. Another very handy feature about using the workflow manager is that you can load in multiple data sets uh, into this and, and then batch run um, maybe all of your data for a given study all at once. So that becomes very, very handy as well. So now I've done some very basic um, pre-processing. I'll jump into just looking at doing a GLM analysis on um, this singular data set. So here we can first just define exactly what are the statistical contrasts that we might want to, to do. So if, if we look at comparisons between our two conditions here and add that contrast, maybe we also add in one other contrast comparing baseline to, to one of the conditions. Um, we can do this and then we can add things in like uh, our short channels, which I've included in, in this data set. We also have an accelerometer in this data set, so we're able to go ahead and, and add in motion tracking as a confounding predictor. Um, there are a handful of different options around um, what exactly HRF model we want to use, um, potentially other, other options about how we're going to pre-whiten the data, et cetera. Go ahead and run this GLM analysis, and we'll take a quick peek at the results. Um, and that's that's sort of the basics of uh, a quick single um, single data set GLM analysis that you could easily run in Satori. Of course, adding confound predictors and definitely makes the GLM run a little bit longer. So again, like I mentioned, um, 
my favorite thing to do for sure is looking at these results on, on the 3D head model. So if I um, unselect one of our, our tests and just look at our left versus right, um, we can already see some, some heat map indications of where in the cortex we see some significant differences between our left and right condition in, in this case. Um, what we can see on the statistics tab is that we're using FDR to deal with multiple comparisons. So being a little conservative here, we can also set this threshold manually and explore more about what areas of the cortex might have been a little bit more active, less uh, or more in these different conditions. Again, we can go back and unselect a given um, contrast and, and view what's going on with other statistical tests that we might be interested in about the data. And then of course, um, as you're getting ready to um, publish some of your results, you may want to do different things with the views. So you've got a lot of options and a lot of control over what can be shown and how this is going to look. Um, and you can always be exporting some of these views, both, both the time series plots, these 3D and 2D views, um, to help illustrate the results of your studies. So another really interesting thing that I would like to highlight about this 3D view is that you could click on one of these areas that you see as being quite active and interesting in your scenario and, and get those MNI coordinates. Um, so this is really helpful for just, you know, thorough reporting about what exactly uh, you're seeing in your results. All right. So those are really quick, not a very th thorough and comprehensive view of where Satori is now. We've got a lot of resources, videos, tutorials on our YouTube channel. Uh, the Getting Started Guide is a great way to kind of get uh, through a lot of these types of steps. Um, but what I'll do now is go ahead and pass things over to Michael uh, to show us more about what are the new things happening in Satori 2.0. Perfect. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks for the great introduction. Uh, yeah, hello everyone from uh, my side as well. I will continue with the uh, webinar and basically guide you towards the the new features of uh, Satori 2.0. Let me share my screen for that. You can see the black screen right now, and hopefully Satori 2.0 popping up now. So we've been working hard uh, during the last month and uh, half year to prepare the first major update of uh, Satori. And uh, yeah, as you have experience from the, the first version, uh, there were already along the way, a lot of changes uh, that were going on. Most importantly, you can always find these changes in the release notes. So help show release notes to get a clear overview of features that are added over time. So also later on in the next years to come, you can always go back and check in detail what has changed in these versions. That goes down to the third uh, versioning. So you can always really figure out if there's something. If you have a paper published and there's some information on a bug or if something is coming up with a feature request, which version you need, you can always go back and check in Satori in the release notes yourself, uh, which version was basically used for that. So now we created a new tab. We are at Satori 2.0. And this is one major uh, release, so milestone release, which includes a lot of new features. And one of the main features that we will have in Satori 2.0 is the Python integration. And I know that most of you have uh, heard or even used Python in general. But uh, what does it mean for, for Satori? So Python is, is basically a programming language. Uh, and Satori is a user-friendly uh, software that where you don't even need to have programming skills to use it and, and analyze your data. But especially now in the scientific world, um, we have a key aspect, which is open science and reproducibility. And Python is one of the key elements in this, in this move. So Satori should also be part of this general feature to be able to program specific um, key features software yourself within Satori and make use of this very easily. So this is one of the milestones that we will uh, basically push forward in Satori 2.0. And this will 
allow you the first time to extend Satori yourself with your own source code and with your own features. Now in Satori, you can see that there's now this Python button here in the top, and it shows you a menu uh, of scripts. Satori will come with some predefined example scripts for the first uh, 2.0 release. And uh, next to it, you can, of course, extend the scripts yourself. To be able to learn how to do this, we integrated also a help and have these help menus now more integrated into the whole software package. Important for you to know is that we will support specific um, Python code ourselves from every update of Satori. These supported Python scripts are highlighted with a little Satori icon underneath it. And they are also shown in every description that you can see, is this a verified Python script from Satori or is this a user-defined Python script? So if you, for example, go into the scripts here and see, you will see in the bottom left that it says, this is a verified Satori script or other scripts, it says that it's not verified. So all of these scripts will work in the future versions of Satori. So if you rely on specific uh, features that you want to use over time and you don't want to take care of, of the maintenance, you can assure that these uh, tools that we provide will be updated. And this also includes the back end of Satori. So Satori is coming with the whole Python package included and uh, installed. So we will take care that all these scripts are working with new Python versions that we embed with Satori. So for you, you will get all the details if you have written your own scripts, what has changed over time so that you can accommodate. And in the future, we also plan that you can select your own environments yourself so that you don't rely on our environment, but you can set basically the respective versions yourself. Now, the scripting itself is pretty straightforward. So we have to place these scripts into a specific location. And to do this, we basically go to file and open the extension folder. And this is one new, uh, new feature in Satori that we now have created a subfolder of your documents folder that includes all the information, all the extensions of Satori. One of the things that comes directly is the extensions, but then also it includes sample data, meaning that in the future, when we have even more features, this will always be organized within a Satori folder so that you have very easy um, overview of the tools that are related to the Satori software in general. To include a Python script, you just go into the extensions, Python scripts, and you can place the script in this folder. How do I see that the Tori was able to load these scripts? Basically, that's what Jeremy was also referring to already. You see this log information here, and now it's also telling you if there is a new information in the log, it will now blink. So you can basically just click here, and then you see a list of scripts that were opened and successfully loaded in Satori. Dependent on the scripts that you are loading and on the um, requirements and dependencies, uh, this can cause problems and errors. That's then also a thing that you need to know where the problem is. So you will get respective information directly in the log tab so that you know even when the program starts and you don't see a Python script here why this is. So you see really exactly the line of the code where it doesn't work and the thing that you need to change to be able to load the script into, uh, into Satori. What you might have also seen is that there are additional folders here. And these are basically there to give you the possibility to extend your script with help information. So for, us, for example, the example correlation, you go to help and click on example correlation, and you then get the help information of this specific script. This is not only possible for scripts that we have created, but you can do this yourself by just placing a respective script uh, information, so an HTML file, for example, into the subfolder with the same name as your Python script. So when you are creating your own uh, tools, you can just share it with the respective help information at hand. So you don't need to provide any more um, resources externally. You can just ship the resources here and then make them available directly into these codes. One other thing that you might have seen is the Python workflows. And this is an extension that is extremely helpful uh, as soon as it comes to uh, applying specific features to more data sets. And I will shortly show you how these look like in Satori. So you are, you've seen the workflow manager and you know these items that you can drag and drop. 
And what we wanted to have is also the possibility to drag and drop Python scripts into your workflow. So here you see now the tools include now uh, new icons that I showed you before. And you have the same idea. You have the, the script and you have the verification of the script below. So to use the script in your, in your uh, tools, you just drag and drop it. And then you see that this is a Python script. And this little arrow here shows you that this is a verified Python script. If you load uh, an unverified script, basically see that it's also Python script, but it doesn't come with this green mark. So this is directly also for us very important to know in case you have a problem and we want to help you, you can share, of course, also these workflows with us so that we can see which parameters you use for Python scripts. And then we can also see if there might be a change in the script that uh, that might have made a change that it was not the, the respective uh, verified script anymore. So what you can also see is that all of these scripts come with their own uh, connectors. So we have the concentration script for the example frequency plot here, for example, but for the quality assessment, uh, the script uses a raw integration. And to be able to achieve this, we prepared some structure and some functions that we need from, from the Python scripts in general. And I will shortly jump into this. It's a bit more detailed, but just to show you shortly how much effort it is to create a script. So let's look at the example frequency plot. So I just go into the Python workflows, example frequency scope, and open the script. In this script, we basically have to define specific parameters. And these are just predefined the, the workflow version that we are needing for the script to run. The most important field is our function to process the data. So this is the call where you will know which file you need to which file you get as an input, which file you need to provide as an output, and the respective arguments that you have provided yourself. Then we have some information about the script. So here, for example, the name, which category it belongs to, which model, and which chromophore. And then in addition, you can provide help information also on the script. I can shortly show you how that works. You just right-click on the script and click on help, and then you get the help of this specific script directly. So looking at the, the source again, you provide some more information, which we will do a specific webinar on, more details on how to program these scripts, but just to show you how much effort it would be to, uh, to put things together. And the main source of your script then comes into the process data. And what will happen then is basically that these workflows will jump into your script as soon as the data is available. So I will now load a data set from the Getting Started Guide data. And I will just connect it to the frequency plot script. Then I have here some options, for example, which channel I want to show. So here, for example, channel 10, I just click run. And then I get from this, uh, from this script a new figure, a new plot, where I can look at the frequency spectrum uh, of this respective data. So this option would would be just one example how you can extend the functionality of the software and the usability by just putting things together and being able to, to see more information that yeah you, you wouldn't be able to, to see beforehand just with this connection. But in general, if you want to add more data and get more information, you can, of course, also create more, uh, more features yourself. That means that you have different tools available that will, for example, help you to scale data or do quality assessment or other um, analysis. These scripts were provided from uh, Joao Pereira from uh, Portugal. And uh, he was so kind to, to share some of the examples that we use in our research together um, to show how, how it would be possible to extend even the software. So for the quality assessment, I just want to show you how this looks like. So I look, if I want to load raw data here, it's just from the getting started guide, the raw data connected to this quality assessment. And then for example, I get this overview plot of the data that you might've seen before already, which includes the triggers and the general overview of all the channels. In addition, I can also show, for example, um, respective scalp coupling index plots that are then 
giving you more detail about the data quality in general. And this is just one example how it will uh, how how things are feasible, and we use this already in uh, in our research, of course, to generally inspect data quality of the of the respective time courses. And here as well, Joao provided some uh, help information and some more details on these tools. So you can check these uh, these information and share them with other people if you like and then integrate it into Satori uh, very easily by these functionalities. Hey, looking at Python scripts, we have the, the same idea that Python in general can be called from, uh, from Satori. And I just want to show you one example script that can run a correlation. So for this, I first want to show you what the correlation would look like. So this, for example, is a data set that I've pre-processed, and it includes uh, some activity, as, uh, as Jeremy has shown. And if I go to analysis and run cross-correlation from the whole data set, I basically get, at the end, an output for each channel correlated with each other. Now, this is inbuilt in, uh, in Satori as a feature, but now I want to do this without the Satori feature, but with Python. So I just click here, example correlation, and it asks me for data sets that it should correlate. So I, in this case, to do the same correlation as in Satori, I open uh, the core base data set once, and I open it the same time again to correlate the data with itself. So afterwards, I will, as you can see, it takes a bit more time to process, but as you can see afterwards, basically get the same plot as you got before from, from Satori. So you see the same peaks in general. And you have the same results as, as you've gotten before, just with another application. So this is also one of our um, main take homes for, for this webinar. The features that are in Satori uh, embedded, they should be possible to replicate with, uh, with open source uh, uh, features that we will also provide to also provide long-term um, open science bases that you can rely on over the next couple of years. And as you can see here, uh, the results are identical for the oxy and for the deoxy data. So next to, uh, to these uh, improvements within, uh, within Python, I just want to go through some of the additional features that we, uh, that we have implemented now for Satori that are more handy to look at the data. And we're especially preparing for more features towards hyperscanning. And one of the things um, that a lot of people have asked us is to integrate more possibilities to compare different time courses. So for example, here we have two runs of, uh, of the same task. And what we can now do in support 2.0 is to use the data plotter and visualize our data onto, uh, onto one um, option here. And for example, use the same channel on the second data set, but just by right click, act to data plotter, and then basically see over time, two different data sets, the same time course. And here you also have on the side the, the time course itself. So you also can see that the scaling across the two runs was even, even the same after the normalization. So that worked out all very nice. In addition, you can use also other information like the accelerometer, for example. So you can now say here, add to data plotter. And this will then integrate the respective time course into the plotter itself. And what you can see right now is that the scaling doesn't work too well. So we have to use the same scaling. So we clean the plot shortly. I add this data set again, and I will add uh, in addition this one and this one. So now you see the data without the respective scale, but you can see now the respective um, auxiliary data combined with the respective data of the, of the near signal. So you can remove also specific parts and then um, uh, add other information. So for example, I can add here the respiration. So just go to time series, add to data plotter, 
And then you can see the respiration over time in combination with your uh, FNIR signal. And there are multiple ways and options how you can combine these signals, uh, but this is just one way how you can visualize them now much easier in, in uh, one plotting system at the time. One other thing that you can see in Satori now is that the scaling improved a lot. So all the icons and everything that you um, yeah that you might have seen before they are now scaled uh, for for Windows 11 in a much uh, nicer and smooth way. So this you can can use quite easily, and we have general speed improvements throughout the application. Next to that, there is an uh, updated getting started guide. So if you go to help getting started, you will see the updated getting started guide. And here you will also find more information uh, on, on the Python scripting. So if I go to Python, you will basically find some more information in the later pages. Yes. And these uh, include some more information on how you can um, connect the different items where you have to place them, but also give you some more in information about general scripting uh, capabilities. And all the new features are also described throughout the, the Getting Started Guide. So they are already included in this version uh, that you get with Satori directly. Okay. These are the main features that I wanted to uh, show you right now. There are more information in the release notes where you can take a look at. And uh, yeah, we will then release the software later today, and you will get a notification in your software directly when you start it after a few seconds. Jeremy, Thanks so much, Michael. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so you know this is a significant paradigm shift. There's a lot of you know new things in the software to aid in and viewing the data. Um, a lot of fundamental backend things, and obviously. <clears throat> being able to extend the functionality via Python uh, really opens the door for, you know, the community to be contributing uh, and for us to quickly get um, new, very helpful features into the software and integrate that into everyone's typical use of Satori. So a significant change um, that will really accelerate how Satori evolves uh, in the coming, in the coming year even. So um, just one more big reminder about uh, hitting us up at the support at nerex.net email. Um, and even though we've, we've got a lot of this documentation and, and Michael showed a lot of the ways that you're able to access the getting started guide and, and the user guide, um, there's lots of videos and we're always happy to help answer more detailed questions, um, including right now. So there's a couple of videos here. I don't think that we'll play those. Um, but thank you guys all for your attention. 